We're here at CBS 2016 in Nairobi, Kenya, and I'm very pleased to be joined by Gabriel Solomon, who's the chairman of UKTA, which is the United Kingdom Telecommunications Academy. Gabriel, thank you very much indeed for being with us today. It's a pleasure. Now, I'd like to start off by talking about uh, this, this particular symposium. It's the Global ICT Capacity Building Symposium. Uh, what, why is capacity building important? Capacity building is a fundamental driver of our organization. It's um, why we exist. Uh, we were born out of a UK, uh, an ITU resolution, sorry, some 20 years ago, to do just that, to capacity build, take from the UK, and deliver to developing countries. Now, there's been a lot of, uh, obviously, there's a lot of emphasis here about uh, ICTs and how they enable capacity building. Perhaps you could tell us a little bit about uh, what you've learned here. Sure. Well, I've learned that actually the UKTA is on the right track. We are offering our online courses, which um, allow students the flexibility uh, to study at their will, maintain their jobs, enjoy a family life, um, which is very important to them. Um, so. What I've learned also, though, is that there is a great digital divide still, and many potential students would not be able to access our courses online. So there is still, nevertheless, a big telecom and regulatory policy angle to extend access and affordability um, to the citizens that don't have that at the moment. Is the particular emphasis on connectivity, do you think, or the particular challenges, are they to do with connectivity? I think there's probably three challenges. One is um, digital skills, so why would people want to be online in the first place? One is access, so do the, can they connect to uh, a network near them? And the third really is affordability. Um, and this is where I think it's up incumbent on the government to decide whether it's for the industry or the state to help subsidize and fund um, those that perhaps less well off than others. Because in principle, of course, uh, people who apply to do one of your courses, for example, uh, they've got to fund themselves, is that right? They have to fund ourselves. However, we have been over the, the last 20 years, we've given out some 300, I can't remember the exact number, but many hundreds of scholarships. So for worthy students, we, we're very keen to help them and engage with third parties to support them. Are there any particular countries that are, are more keen than others to learn? No, I think there is a universal uh, desire to learn. The UKTA works specifically at the moment through the University of Rwanda and the Open University of Tanzania to deliver our two uh, online courses. And those uh, countries have been particularly active in terms of trying to connect their populations? They have done indeed. I think both Kenya and Rwanda have had at a government level and for a long time policies to really ingrain ICTs and connectivity in their country and to leverage uh, that connectivity for the econo economic uh, benefit of their citizens. Now, this is, I know, the, the first time that uh, you've attended this particular symposium. I know that it's a, it's a, a reincarnation or a, a rebranding of an ITU event. I just wanted to find out what have been your, your impressions of it. My impression has been it, it's very exciting to see the level of engagement and enthusiasm from multiple different stakeholders. I think there's a common theme that partnership um, between public, private and academia is, is key and will be key moving forward to determine or help drive um, the way content and education and capacity is delivered moving forward. And it's really great to see so much enthusiasm in one place. How would you hope that uh, capacity building through global ICTs, how do you think it will evolve? Well, I think at the moment we're at the very, very early stage of using the internet to deliver capacity building. And therefore, there is a lot of dispar disparate content around. And I think for students to find what they're looking for um, and, and find the relevant accreditation that they require, um, it's not as easy as it could be. And so I think a lot of the discussions today were about how partnerships could evolve to um, categorize the content, if you will, or provide an easy to use library. Um, so that it's that much easier for students around the world to access what they need. Gabriel Solomon, thank you very much indeed. It's an absolute pleasure again. Thank you.